Okay, so this is um, um, this is, this is a description of a biological control process that is taking place now in, a Sp in Spain, in the eastern part of Spain. And it involves a plant and an insect from Central America. The plant is Opuntia ficus indica, and the, and the insect is Dactylopis opuntia, which is an Emiptera, a sap-sucking insect, that has arrived to Spain accidentally. Um, it, it, it first was detected in, 2000 and, in 2007 here, and it has spread to the Valencian region, here, and to neighboring regions in the southern part of Spain. Let's take a look first at what the invasion by Opuntia ficus indica looks like. Here you are. Um, Opuntia ficus indica is a large cacti from Central America. It has been in Spain for 400 years. It was brought, by, it was brought from Central America on the return trip by, on, on the return trip by Christopher Colum Columbus. And since then, it has invaded the territory rather exhaustively. Here I show you a picture of um, um, Calderona Natural Park. It's a coastal area, a sand, sandstone coastal area, and sandstone is the favorite substrate for Opuntia ficus indica, and that is why it attains this uh, very high density. It changes the landscape, and it competes very effectively with um, native plant communities. Here you, uh, you can see how uh, this plant invasion is not restricted to degraded areas. Opuntia is able to enter plant, uh, very well-preserved plant communities and change them completely. Here you have a distribution of Opuntia ficus indica in the Valencian region. It's one of the best distributed um, uh, exotic plants in our region. And the reason why, uh, and the reason underlying this is that it's a, it is a very well uh, integrated species in the natural communities. It's pollinized by bees and, it's just, and, it, and it is dispersed by by birds and by mammals, which eat the fruits, which contain a prodigious amount of, uh, of seeds, of viable seeds. And these uh, birds and mammals disperse the plant to remote locations where control is impossible. Um, so the invasion by Opuntia was unstoppable until Dactylopius Opuntia appeared accidentally in Spain. We don't know how it, it arrived to our country. We believe it, it, it was a contaminant of a plant uh, importation. And uh, Dactylopis opuntia has started to control the expansion of Opuntia ficus indica and to destroy populations, as we will see later. Dactylopis, is a, um, Dactylopis opuntia is, is an emitter, as, as I told you. It's a sap-sucking insect. Um, there is a strong, uh, there is a, it exhibits a very strong sexual di dimorphism. These are the females, these are the males. Males, uh, the females are sessile, they don't move. The males are winged and fly. The females are very long, are long lived. The, the males are short lived and they don't eat, they don't have mouthpieces. Only the females uh, uh, sap, the, uh, sap the, the fluids of the opuntia and inflict damage. Okay? And dispersal of this insect is passive, is by the wind. And to do, to do this, the females, what they do in their first days of life, in their, in their three first days of life, they crawl to the top of the Opuntia plant and let themselves be carried away by the wind. And that's the way it disperses. There are nine species of Dactylopius and all of them are uh, specific to a particular genus of cacti, like Opuntia, Cylindropuntia and Grusonia. And they eat nothing else. They have a very remarkable specificity record. And this is what uh, Dactylopius infestations look like at the beginning. You see Dactylopius grows in clumps of females um, in a matrix of whitish wax hairs. Okay? And they have a preference for fruits because the fruits are very vascularized and they, so that, um, they can obtain a lot, of a lot of nutrients from them. So that um, in the first stages of infestation, the plant stops producing fruits because they all fall to the ground. And this is, uh, stop, um, so Dactylopis has the ability to stop sexual reproduction, reproduction of the plant right from the start. It's important to note that once the, um, once the female disperses to, another, to, a, to a different plant, and once it, it attaches to the leaf to the cladode, to the plant cladode, it doesn't move anymore in all, in all her life, okay? Because once it fixes its mouth parts into the leaf of the plant, it cannot remove them. It has to be there all her life. Okay, um, Dactylopius opuntiae are 
one of the first, uh, are among the first organisms to be used in biological control. In fact, they were used one in, in 1915, so it's more than a century ago. And ever since then, they have been used in South Africa and Australia quite extensively to fight the um, invasions by Opuntia and Cylindropuntia. And the efficiency of these organisms, the efficiency, uh, uh, the efficiency of these organisms depends on the, on, the, on, the, on the climate. In wet climates, they are very inefficient. However, in warm climates, in warm, dry climates, they are very, very efficient, disperse very rapidly, and cause major injury to plants. Why is this so? Well, um, Dactylopius is very sensitive to rain. The, the energy of raindrop is, ena is enough to dislodge a female from her, from her cladode, and once dislodged, this female will die. And in addition, the, the very young Dactylopius, when they are starting to move in the plant to be dispersed, are also very sensitive to rain. So rain is very damaging to Dactylopius, and in those countries where rain is abundant, Dactylopius progress is very slow, and damage to plants is, damage to plants is very low. However, in warm, climate, warm climates, it's just the opposite. Dispersal is very fast, and the damage to plants is very, is, is very important. Here um, you have a distribution um, of uh, introduced Dactylopius species, Dactylopius opuntiae. They have, they, it's present currently in Hawaii, Australia, and South Africa, and in Spain. Dactylopius appeared initially in France in, in 2001, in Marseille, but it disappeared. It was an anecdotal presence. Then later it appeared in 2007 in, in Spain. And since then, it has progressed from, he, from here, its initial point, to Malaga and uh, uh, north, southern part of Valencia province, and it has also appeared in, two, in last year ra around Barcelona. Okay, so now it covers an area of 14 or 4 million hectares, which is the biggest surface covered by this pest in the Western Palearctic. And it is remarkable that it, it has been capable to adapt itself to very different climates. Here is Orihuela, which is a very arid region. Um, area of the Valencian region with less than 300 millimeters per year. However, it can grow and cause damage also to plants in the Barcelona area where rainfall is around 600, more than double the one we find in Orihuela. So, and there are two remarkable aspects about this colonization of Dactylopius. The first one is that the rate has been very, very fast. It, it's been dispersing at a rate of roughly 40 kilometers per year. So compared to what to previous records, this is a lot. And it may, it may be due to the fact that in the Mediterranean, in the Eastern Mediterranean countries, the summer is a, t is a, is a period of time where very warm tem temperatures coincide with a total lack of precipitation creating very suitable conditions for reproduction of Dactylopius. And another fact that is helping, no doubt, to the very fast distribution of Dactylopius, dispersal of Dactylopius, is the fact that there is an almost continuous distribution of Opuntia along the Mediterranean coast. Note here, this is the, a more real distribution. Here is um, outdated, here is updated. So you can see that from here, from here to here, to the north of Spain, there is an almost continuous distribution that acts as a stepping stones for the dispersal, for the passive dispersal of this species. Another remarkable fact about this Dactylopius infestation is the, the very high incidence and the very, and the very severe injury that it's causing to, it's causing to plants. Okay? Um, with incidence, I mean that every single individual plant within the core distribution area of, of Dactylopius is being badly affected. And with the severity of the attack, I mean this. I mean, if you take this, from this date to this date, it's roughly one year and a half. And if you consider how robust one of these plants is and how tiny the insect is, it's amazing to, co to, to see what um, the, da the damage it is capable of inflicting to a very strong and healthy plant in such a short period of time. Obviously, uh, it is very remarkable to consider that um, the incidence is so high with a process being guided only by chance because dispersal is by wind and non-directional. I mean, the insect ha doesn't have the capacity to guide its landing on a particular, on a, on a, on a, on, on an, on, on an opuntia ficus indica. Okay, so it lands on an opuntia ficus indica just by chance. 
So this means there must be a huge propagule pressure of flying females on, in the air, landing on different spots and hitting, uh, by chance, Opuntia plants. Okay. It has been capable even of flying uh, long distances over the sea. This is, an, um, this is Benidorm Island, more or less three kilometers off the coast of Alicante. And it reached the island and it devastated the Opuntia populations in a very short time. Again, this is a very, very uh, warm location. Well, you probably you, you know Benidorm. It's a, it's a major tourist destination in, in Spain. And it's, it has a rep uh, well, it's very hot and, and warm weather all the year round, uh, providing a very suitable climate for its development. And you can see what it has done in a very short period of time. And it's remar remarkable that it was capable of um, crossing the sea with no Opuncia in the middle. We have in uh, the Regional Environmental Council, uh, we have been used as, as an environmental authority, has been using these Dactylopius to fight Opuntia populations in areas where Dactylopius has not yet arrived, just by, by translocated, translocating infested cladodes to these areas. And the process is very easy and very effective with no pesticide use at all. And as you can see, well, it, uh, um, following three months, it, the, the colonization is very evident. And just after uh, 11 months, I think, well, the, the damages are uh, very, very important. So Dactylopius has the potential to act as a very, very effective uh, biological control agent for this plant. And it will, in the short, in the medium term, uh, end up by destroying all um, the populations of these highly invasive species, or Puntia species. So the conclusions are Dactylopius has a very high incidence of attack and a very high level of damage, which increases with time and eventually kills the plants. And Dactylopius opuntia is found across all habitat types where opuntia grows, reflecting a great potential for natural dispersal and wide habitat suitability. And we, our hypothesis is Dactylopius opuntia will affect and ultimately kill all Opuntia populations in Spain, at least in the Mediterranean coasts of Spain. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Vincent. Uh, any question to this presentation? Uh, does it also attack Opuntia vulgaris? No. So it is just specific it's for this? It's highly specific. It doesn't attack. In the Valencian region, there are uh, at least eight Opuntia species growing mm -hmm. in the, uh, naturalized, and it doesn't attack any, in, any Opuntia or Thelindia Opuntia species. It only attacks Opuntia ficus indica. Okay, thank uh, you. It's highly specific. Uh, have you checked uh, climatic conditions in other parts of Mediterranean region where it would also uh, be convenient for this species to spread or to, to use it as biocontrol? Yes, um, I think, um, as I told you, it, um, Daxilopius in our, in our region, in the eastern part of Spain, is present in very arid territories, but also in temperate territories with a precipitation of 600 liters per year, which is quite a lot. So I think it must be able to adapt to any condition prevailing in Mediterranean countries where the, uh, Opuntia ficus indica grows. Uh, and, and I tend to think that it will expand to, um, all over the Mediterranean basin in the medium term. It's, it's already present in Israel. Hmm. I have the feeling that we have to be very, very lucky to find such a spe specialist uh, species as a, as a biological yeah. <laughs> enemy for the invasive species, yeah. Any further question here? Uh, it is known how the bug arrived? No. No. No, we have no idea. And it was initially located in a region that it doesn't have a tradition for plant imports, but mm -hmm. the fact is that it appeared. Mm -hmm.